We're beginning our new unit, and we're going to look at vectors in two dimensions. That's the first part of this 2D kinematics thing. Uh, so far, everything has been along just uh, the X axis or the Y axis all by itself. Uh, the X axis when we go side to side and the Y axis when we go up and down. So just for a quick example, a little review of what we've done. Um, we're going to have a man walk 20 meters north and 30 meters south. So We're going to say his total displacement is the vector sum. We're just introducing some new terms. It's the vector sum of those two motions. So there are two ways that we can look at solving that. One of those ways is graphically. And so for that, we're going to draw a vector that represents going 20 meters north. We're going to add that to a vector that's going 30 meters south. Now, um, Putting these together, we're going to draw them on top of each other. So we're going to draw the first one 20 meters north. Uh, and at the end of that 20 meters north, we're going to begin the 30 meters south. And the resultant is the distance from the beginning to the end. So we call this method of adding vectors tip to tail. It's the most common sense way to do it. We, we draw a vector, and then at the tip of that vector, we add the tail of the next vector, and so we just continue drawing them over and over and over. Uh, the resultant, which is the vector sum, or, or his displacement in this case, the resultant vector is drawn from the very beginning, the starting point, to the end. And we can see that our, our resultant here, resultant is just the sum of two or more vectors. That's, that's our word for resultant. Our resultant here is 10 meters south. And when we report that resultant, we have a magnitude, that's the 10 meter part, and a direction, that's the south part. But we can also do this algebraically without using the picture. Um, to solve for it algebraically, we take 20 meters north, add 30 meters south, but one's north and one's south. So one's positive, so positive 20 meters, minus plus negative 30 meters. Algebraically, that's how we do it. Along a straight line, we can have a positive and negative. Positive is one direction, negative is the opposite direction. So our result in this case is negative 10 meters, which is just 10 meters south. North in this case is positive. <coughs> south in this case is negative. Since my result is negative, it's 10 meters south. Now, if the motion is in two dimensions, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to look at another example. We're going to go 40 meters north and then 30 meters east. And so graphically... We'll do our 20 meters, or sorry, our 40 meters north, and then 30 meters east. That's what those two vectors look like. We're going to add them tip to tail, just like we did the other ones. So we're going to draw our 20 meters north, 30 meters east, and then our resultant connects the beginning point to the end point. So in this case, graphically we would just measure it, but if we want to actually calculate it, it's going to be 30 squared plus 40 squared. We cannot just add these two things together because they're not along a line. Adding them together necessarily means doing this tip-to-tail thing. We have to do that. Uh, so when we do that, the resultant comes out to be 50 meters. And then we have to find that angle, which comes out to be 53 degrees. We will talk about finding that angle a little bit later. Um, algebraically, talk more about that. Algebraically, 
looks a little bit different too. We can't just assign a positive and a negative. What we have to do is break this up into x motion and y motion. So we have to look at what's happening. Because positive and negative are not a good enough way to distinguish between these two, <coughs> we'll have to do something else. Positive and negative are not descriptive enough. Negative 30 meters east doesn't tell me it's different than north. It just tells me it's opposite. So we need to do something more. Or something more is looking at everything that's happening in the x and everything that's happening in the y. This is a really simple case. There's only one thing happening in the x. We're going positive 30 meters. There's only one thing happening in the y. We're going positive 40 meters. To find the totals, we find the totals in the x and the y. Then we draw that little triangle at the end and find the resultant. That's not a very detailed explanation of how to do it algebraically, so we're going to go through an example and look at how to add vectors graphically and how to add them algebraically. So, here's our example. <coughs> Pardon. We're going to have a man walk two meters north, four meters east, five meters south, two meters west, Finally, seven meters north. And we want to know what is his resultant displacement. How far does he go overall? So, graphically, we're going to draw all of these vectors and add them tip to tail. So, let's start here. We'll go two meters north, four meters east, uh, five meters south, two meters west, and then our seven meters north. That is what we did tip to tail. Drew the first vector at the tip of that one, drew the tail of the second one. So one vector after another. This is how we add them graphically. And then, to find our resultant, we start at the very beginning point and we end at the very last place that we are. So, when we do this graphically to get our resultant, you're just going to use a, a ruler and measure it. So, our resultant with a ruler comes out to be about 4.5 meters according to this scale. We measured that. Graphically, you're going to measure it. It's distance, so we use a ruler. And we're going to do it with a protractor at 63 degrees. And we'll talk about these angles a little bit more in detail, but we're going to use a protractor to measure things when we do things graphically. But I'm going to need you to do more than graphically. We're also going to have to look at this situation algebraically. With the algebra, again, we have to break it up into what's happening in the x and what's happening in the y. So, in the x direction, sorry. So, the first thing we do is 2 meters north. That's positive 2 meters in the y. Then we go 4 meters east. That's positive 4 meters in the x. Then we go 5 meters south. That's negative 5 meters in the y. 2 meters west is negative 2 meters in the x. And then we add our 7 meters north positive. So we break up the motion into everything that's happening in the x, everything that's happening in the y. Then we add them together. So total in the x we have 2 meters, total in the y we have 4 meters. So 2 in the x plus 4 in the y does not come out to be 6. We are not allowed to just add these things together when they're at 90 degrees. Their vectors and their, their spatial qualities matter. We're not allowed to ignore that uh, when we're finding results. So what we need to do is draw our 2 meters in the x, draw our 4 meters in the y, and then draw our result. Now, in this case, algebraically, to find the length of that resultant vector, 
I know that I have two meters along the bottom, four meters along that side. Our resultant is just the hypotenuse of that triangle. Um, so we're going to do a little Pythagorean theorem. Two squared plus four squared square rooted. That resultant comes out to be 4.47 meters, which is close to what we got before. So algebraically, we can get a more exact answer, 4.47 meters. Then we also need to find that angle, which is a little bit difficult, <clears throat> especially if we're just now working on our trigonometry. So to find that angle, we're going to have to use the sines, the cosines, and the tangents. Well, for this angle, we're going to use the tangent because we know the opposite side is 4 meters, the adjacent side is 2 meters. To get the value for the angle, we're going to do the tan negative 1, it's called the arc tangent, of 4 over 2. That's how we find angles. That angle comes out to be uh, 63.4 degrees. So my resultant overall is 4.47 meters, that's the magnitude, at 63.4 degrees. That's the total. It has both magnitude and direction. And again, magnitude is just the number part. How long? Or how fast? And then direction is the direction part. Directions are an important thing to talk about. Um, so, when we speak about these angles, we need to make sure that we're on the same page. Um, and so, to do that, We'll talk about something that you'll get to in math, hopefully this year, unless you've already had it. It is the unit circle. We're going to be measuring all of our angles against this. And what's nice is north, south, east, and west fit on here exactly where they should go. So the angles according to that, straight east is going to be zero degrees. Straight north is going to be 90 degrees. Straight west is 180 degrees. Straight south is 270 degrees. So when we say at 63.4 degrees, we are saying that our angle is between 0 and 90 at 63.4 degrees. Um, if our angle were 210, it'd be over here. 210 would be somewhere in the southwesterly direction. But everything's going to be within this 360 degree angle uh, thing. So all of our angles will be measured uh, from zero. We need to report them from there as well. And then just as a note, it's okay to say that 330 degrees is the same thing as negative 30 degrees. Uh, so negative 30 degrees you would start off at zero and you would swing down 30. 330 degrees, you would start at zero, go all the way to 90, 180, 270, and 330. As a preview for next time, we're going to be talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over I wrote cosine wrong, sorry. Cosine is um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We'll talk about those tomorrow.